Hi, and welcome once again. This is Mr. Reyes with Curious Unlimited, where we continue our conversation in chapter seven on basic nursing skills. And we're gonna cover it this first objective. I'm going to explain to you what it means to admit a resident into a long-term care facility. Now, there is a lot of work done in the background. Uh, when a resident first arrives into the facility, usually the nursing staff will have um, um, a heads up, right? Uh, and information about the resident as far as the demographics, the name, their, uh, their uh, gender, their height and weight and so on, uh, and other uh, medical information. But as it relates to the nursing assistant, we will also be required to, it would be helpful at least for you to know who is going to be admitted into your facility and of course, into your unit. So as a nurse, I have the responsibility to inform you or at least the professional uh, obligation to inform you of the resident that is coming in and we're expecting. Now, before this resident ever comes in, let's take a moment and evaluate why is this resident even here in the first place? Well, as for example, let's say a resident was living at home. Uh, he's a widowed 70 year old male. He is, uh, was independent until he incurred a fall. He fell, he broke maybe his right hip. So he was taken to the emergency room, evaluated, uh, sent for a surgical evaluation, had a surgical uh, repair of the right hip, and now he will need some rehabilitation. So he was uh, given the opportunity or offered the opportunity to come to a facility for rehabilitation. So now this uh, resident has been, this person has been referred to your facility. So I'm going to give you the demographics of this person. He's 70 years old, he's a male. He's, uh, let's say he weighs 200 pounds and um, he's here because for rehabilitation, he's, he just had uh, surgery off his right hip. So he's gonna require for us to observe the surgical incision. Uh, you may not be responsible to, for care of that incision, but at least you know that you need to report you know, abnormal finding. Okay, so this is an example. So now the resident is rolling in, the EMS is bringing him into the facility via stretcher, let's say. And uh, before that resident walk, goes into the room, you must ensure that the room is clean and ready for the resident. This room must be sanitized way before the resident is in. And the bed must be done. Everything must be clear and clean for the resident. This room is going to be uh, his for a determined amount of time. Most residents come to the facilities uh, for, let's, if it's for rehabilitation, maybe it'll say about uh, 21 days is a minimum or more if need be. So this room is going to be his home for that amount of time. So we have to treat it as such, right? Just as you have your own home, nobody can walk in unless they're invited in, unless they're allowed in. So people that come to your home, they must knock, be let in and so on. So we have to keep that in mind, not just because we are employees and we work there, we have the right to barge into somebody's room. So again, we have to knock, introduce ourselves, do all that indirect care and uh, explain, you sanitize your hands, wash your gloves and so on. So the room is already clean, the bed is elevated. So when a bed is elevated, this bed means, or this means that the room uh, is uh, unoccupied, okay? We elevate the bed so nobody comes in and sits on it. So now that you know the residents come in, we go in there, we're going to lower the bed for the resident, okay? EMS transfers the patient or resident into the bed. And of course, you have to greet them. Remember, first impression is the one that counts. Think about what this resident is thinking. Is he happy to be here with us? Perhaps, maybe not. Most of the time, it's the latter. So keep that in mind. He's afraid. How long is he going to be here? He's going to stay here forever. I'm sure he's heard of stories where residents have been kept here for years and died there. So he has some fears. He has some uncertainty of what's going to happen to him uh, during this day, of course. So we have to really project a positive attitude. We have to make that good, positive impression. Now, some residents may react a little bit angry. They may be upset because, well, nobody told them that he was coming to a nursing home. Nobody told them that he was going to be here. So you must understand the emotions that are going to this person. This was not his first choice. His first choice was his own home. But of course, he wasn't able to go home because he wasn't able to uh, help himself for the certain amount of time. So the doctors will, again, prescribe uh, rehabilitation for them for a certain amount of time until they are able to fend for themselves, okay? So fear, uncertainty, anger, and of course, depression. 
right? Why, may, why would they be ever be depressed? Well, perhaps maybe uh, their families, they feel their families have let them down. Why aren't they coming in to help them and care for them, you know, and so on. So there's a lot of emotions, a lot of thoughts that are going through their mind. They lost their health, their mobility, their independence. Independence is a big one. Their family, they're not around. They may be around for a few days and then they're gone. Friends don't usually show up, you know, like they used to. Their pets may not be allowed in the facility. And of course, they're, maybe their garden, they're gonna miss the garden. You know, some people are really into that. So you have to understand everything that they've lost from the moment they experienced the fall up to this point. So they had a lot of losses during this process. It may be a week or two weeks, but you know, at times it feels like an eternity. So keep that in mind as you're offering care for the patient, be understanding, be compassionate, be empathetic, put yourself in the position, all right? Listen to them, listen to, to what they're saying, anything they say, okay, their body language, what they're saying, if it's anything uh, bad and uh, it's, do not take it personal, it's nothing against you. All these emotions are coming in and it creates a lot of conflict and anger in us, you know, for many reasons. So please be very, very understanding, especially if there's some communities that feel a little bit ostracized or looked at differently, perhaps even um, uh, discriminated against, such as the LGBTQ communities. Uh, they may have these emotions that, you know, because people judge them, they may feel even more um, uh, unappreciated or unwanted. So please be careful with this. So again, what is going on in this person's mind? You have to ask yourself and be a good listener. Be a good listener. All right, now, now that the resident has come in, you've introduced yourself, you greet them, okay? What is it that you need to do as a nursing assistant? Well, again, we said the room is ready for the resident. Everything's gonna be here. They bring some belongings with him. When he arrives, note the time. What time did he come in? Is it 10 in the morning? or 10 p.m. What is their condition? Are they alert? Do they know their name? Do they know where they're at? Okay, why do we need to know this? Because this is, again, baseline information that we need to document. If there is any changes in their condition, we also need to inform the nurses. That is why it's important that you be a good observer, be a good observer and a good listener. Okay, so listen to them. Are they talking, uh, are they sound, do they sound confused? Do they know where they are and so on? So please be very um, a good observer. Introduce yourself, state your name. My name is you know, such and such. I'm a nursing assistant today and I'm here to help you with your needs, you know, whatever it is you need help with, all right? Uh, please um, address them by their name. Please avoid any, any uh, other types of um, uh, pronouns, such as like uh, grandpa or grandma or sweetie, things like that because that only opens um, uh, leeway for other problems. So again, just address them by their name. Now, when we come into the facility, all right, uh, you're going to look at the resident and you're going to read their body language. Just look at their facial expression real quickly. You're not gonna stare. Just read their uh, facial expressions. How are they? Are they upset? Are they happy? You know, how are they greeting you? Are they saying hello and so on? Uh, you also need to be project a good attitude, okay? When you walk in there and you bring everything and you're in a hurry, they are looking at you. They are perceiving you that you are in a rush. So please do not rush the admission process. This is the time where you're gonna make a very good impression. Make sure the resident feels welcome, all right? Again, you're not exactly happy or thrilled about being there. And with us making the process too rushed, they're gonna feel unappreciated, unwanted, okay? A bother to you. So many times they will close down, they will shut down, and they will not say very much. But they will tell you that they remember the first person that came into that room was a good or a bad impression. So if you're that person, make sure you make a very good impression. Now, once you're in there, let's say you just made a great impression, you say, hello, good morning, you smiled, and, and, and so on. Okay, what else do you have to do? Well, you have to explain the daily operations of the facility, all right? This person came at 10 in the morning. That means that he might have missed breakfast or maybe he needs to eat or so on. So explaining the daily operations like the meal times, it's a very important thing, okay? The call bell, the use of the hospital bed, the drawers, the restrooms, 
okay, activities during the day, whatever may be happening on a regular basis, there is calendars that tell you what's going on as far as activities are concerned. So please, uh, you know, slowly explain to uh, things to them as you're maybe arranging your personal items, handle them with care, put them at their, uh, uh, in their nightstand, ask them what would you like for them to place them and so on. So make them feel like they're in control, all right? This is a new place for them. They may feel out of place, awkward, again, uh, as a stranger. So please help them uh, feel a little bit more in control of the situation because right now they feel like they have, they don't know anything. Uh, they are not in control. So please help them with those things. Again, handle those personal items with care and respect, all right? Honor their residence preferences when setting up all equipment. They may bring family pictures and so on. You might even encourage them to bring personal items from home and be a friend or relative can bring a family picture, maybe a picture of their pet or a personal item, a, a, a clock, a TV or something like that. We try to make this environment as homely as possible, okay? So it's important that we care for their items, all right? Observe the resident for anything that is missed during the admission. For example, if you notice something like maybe a cut, a big bruise, right? Something that is, you know, perhaps very obvious, but it was missed. You know, you think, well, maybe the nurse already noted it, or maybe they didn't. So go ahead and report it, okay? Uh, tell the nurse, hey, did you uh, did you notice that you know that redness in the in the back in his backside or a bruise on his right arm, things like that. These things matter because these things are reportable. They're actually uh, uh, taken very seriously because if a family comes in and notices that, they're going to come back at us and say, well, he didn't have it before. And you're like, uh, yes, he did. He had it when he first came in. It was a bruise. He said he ran into something and he got the bruise. It's very common that older people get bruises. So uh, be very um, observant, okay? Especially of the skin. It's one of the most important things that we notice on a daily basis, especially when we help them with a the shower, with personal care. Uh, we always look at the skin from head to toe. Very, very important that you notice things and report them, all right? Let the residents adapt to the new homes at their own pace. Don't rush them. Explain to them, answer the questions that need it, okay? Uh, especially any signs of confusion or depression in their emotional state. If they're getting too depressed, they don't want to talk, you know, things like that. Go ahead and notify the nurse, report to the nurse, you know? When they first came in, they were very excited and thrilled to be here for, to, uh, for rehabilitation, and now they're kind of down. So please go ahead and uh, make sure that you report even these changes. Remember, we care for these residents in a holistic manner. In a holistic manner means that you care for the entire person, not just their physical needs like eating, drinking, showers, toileting. We, we don't just do that. We look at their emotional state, their psychological state, their spiritual side. You know, we look at all these different things about the person so that they know that we care. So if you can do this with every resident, okay? Now, many times you will you know, overlook some things, but you try your best to make sure that you report and look at these, these residents as a whole person, okay? Not just the physical needs or the emotional needs, but everything about them, all right? Remember the residents' rights uh, during the admission uh, process, the right to be told, uh, you know, to participate in the care, to make their own decisions and so on. So it's really important that you as a healthcare team member be a, a protector of their rights, okay? We are there for them and, uh, that is how we function as a healthcare team. So what are you gonna do? Most of the time when a resident first comes in to the facility, you've already you know, explained everything about the facility. You have to provide them with some basic items. Most of the time you'll be providing them with a, a, a basin, okay, a, um, a shower basin. Uh, you're going to provide them with a emesis basin, a a drinking cup, a small pitcher for water, maybe a toothbrush, you know, personal grooming items. All these have to be uh, given to the resident and assigned to them just for that person on admission, okay? Some of the other things that we will do during the admission process is obtain a inventory list. An inventory list is a list of items that they bring in with themselves, especially of items that are of value such as eyeglasses, hearing aids, dentures. Most of the older residents will have one of the above, all right? So it's really important that you make a list, an inventory list 
Why? Because when they go home, they have to take these items with them, all right? Or perhaps they didn't bring it with them and now they're claiming that they did. So it's really important that we make that inventory list, okay? It has to be on there. That way we can prove that yes or no, you brought it with you when you first came in. Remember, these items can be very costly. Hearing aids can run from $1,000 to $5,000. Dentures are not e made easy, easily or very quickly. They run into thousands of dollars. Eyeglasses, hundreds of dollars. So it's very important, not just because we may replace them or damage them, but because the resident needs them. You know, they need their hearing aids to hear you talk and speak and communicate. They need their eyeglasses to see, read, and of course their dentures so they can eat. So it's really important that these items be very well cared for. Many times they're very easily misplaced because they're left on the dinner trays uh, or in between their linen. You know, they're in bed laying around, they take off the glasses, they leave them there. You uh, do their bed and linen and put it, you know, make it in a bundle, put it into the linen cart and so on and off they go. Stories and stories of items that are lost every single day unnecessarily. Why? Because, well, we need, we're not observant. So we have to be careful with these items. Very careful, especially if they're very expensive items. Now, at times the resident will have to be transferred from one room to another room for various reasons. But the fact of the matter is that these residents have to be informed of their rights. They have the right to be informed of a transfer at, within five days of the transfer, right? So the nurse aide should explain the details of the transfer. If they have questions about why, when, where, you need to relay that to the nurse so they can come in and explain that. If you don't feel uh, comfortable answering those questions or that you cannot answer the questions, then just relay, the, you know, relay it to the nurse. They, they have questions, they need answers, then the nurse should be able to answer all the questions, okay? Or some other staff member, maybe the social worker or supervisors, et cetera, whoever made the decision to transfer them. Now, when they do agree to be transferred, you're gonna have to help assist with packing all the personal items. Everything that they brought with them in the beginning has to be put in place. You gotta get the inventory list, look at it, go through it, make sure that everything's there, okay? The resident must always be informed of any room or roommate changes as well, right? They have the right to be informed. Uh, remember, they do have rights, so we cannot just put anybody in a particular room. Now, are you going to be transferring a resident, okay? Uh, there is a process, okay? Uh, you'll be practicing in in the lab, so make sure that you get familiar with those uh, with those steps as uh, as you demonstrate them. Again, be very positive, be very positive and encouraging with the residents uh, when because the day will come when they're going to go home. Okay, this is a discharge process. Okay, very exciting day for them because they get to go home, they get to live in their own home, be with their family as they please, and so on. So this is a very important day for them. Okay. Again, we have to review certain areas as far as their activity and their diet that they're gonna continue. Of course, we're gonna get that inventory list once again, pack all the belongings, okay? Uh, we usually, the nurses are responsible to inform the patients of any follow-up appointments, any physical therapy, uh, therapy appointments or that may be continued in the home setting. Any home health care if it's gonna be um, assigned or prescribed, medications that they will be taking um, are uh, reviewed um, by the nurse with the resident and perhaps their family. Any walking instructions or ambulation, are they going to be walking using a cane, a walker, or are they going to be in a wheelchair for a period longer? What is that? So nurses have to explain all this. Any medical equipment that is needed or needs to be installed in the home before they go home, maybe they're going to need a shower chair for a while. So the durable medical equipment company will be have to deliver that before they go home. Perhaps they have some steps uh, in the home that they need to climb to get into the home setting. Uh, all of this has to be arranged before they go home. In nursing, we usually start working on discharge. We call it discharge planning from the first day they come in because some patients can be very difficult to manage as far as going home. So we have to uh, start things rolling from the first day. Will they need medical transportation? Are they gonna need any type of equipment or any adjustments to their showers? Are they gonna need special exercises, uh, dietary recommendations, any other resources from the um, community? All these things have to be arranged from the first day so that when they go home, everything is ready and set for them and there is no more delays, all right? Patients will not appreciate it being um, 
delayed any longer than they have to, all right? So again, we're gonna put this resident in a wheelchair. We're gonna roll them out to the exit or entrance to the canopy. They will be assisted. If they're going on their own car, they will be assisted to get into their vehicle, buckled up and off they go. They are our responsibility until the last moment we ship them out. So please make sure you're very careful. Do not um, have any falls or accidents or anything uh, until they buckle up and go home. So it's very important that we, again, just for a quick review, make sure that you understand the admission, the transfer, and the discharge process. It's very important to be understanding of these people that come into the facility. We have to make a positive impression, all right? So again, this is the first time they come into the facility, so let's make it a good one. Hopefully they leave with a positive impression as well. And uh, this is only the beginning of a process, all right? So stay tuned. We're going to go to the next section and uh, we're gonna go into what we call the vital signs because you will be using these during the stay of the resident. So we're gonna continue in our next section. So hang in there.